I'm Steve. Welcome to the workshop and I'm here with a project for the wonderful world of woodworking for Carpetech and I hope you enjoy it. I've been thinking, you know, a lot of people when they think about making something automatically the majority of people think, oh, what can I get at the big shop warehouse or the local hardware store? And they don't think that there is timber available that they can get relatively inexpensively if they've got the machinery to process it. So what I thought tomorrow, I'd go out in my yard that is an absolute mess and pick up a couple of bits of timber that you would, I reckon, bypass. You'd walk past it, wouldn't think twice about it. And you'd be amazed at how well it comes up and how nice it looks. And it might give you an inkling next time you're kicking around the timber yard or out the back or somewhere that you see a bit of timber, you go, oh, yeah, I might be able to make something with that. So join me tomorrow when I go out, pick a bit of timber, and we start building a little footstool out of whatever timber I bring in. So I'll see you tomorrow. It's really amazing what you find around the backyard. There's a bulb, but in particular, there's a piece of timber. I'm going to cut about 1.2 metres out of it, from about here to here. This is a working workshop and it's messy and I make no apologies for that whatsoever because no one else is here or has to put up with it except me. All right, now I've done that, I'll put my apron on to become a woodworker. And you'll note when I'm cutting, the board is bowed this way so I'm actually running onto the blade like that with pressure against the fence. Then when this comes off, this board will be on this side and this will part. Whereas if I go this way and I have pressure next to the fence, when this board's finished, there's an air gap underneath and the board will then drop down on the blade, which can cause a, a snatch or a cut that you don't want somewhere. So now I want 240 finished size. What I'm going to rip these at are 250, so I've got room to dress it up. And you'll notice there's a kerfing knife in there because boards like this can jam, which means as I cut, the stress in the timber actually pulls those two boards together in some cases. So when I'm over here, there's no gap between the two boards, there's no area for the curve of the blade to go and you get a snatch and it can actually throw it back and it creates a dangerous situation. So there's a riving knife in there. I've got the blade just above the timber I'm cutting and I'm up against the fence and the fence is secured. I've set that, as I said, at 250. Dust extractor on, blade on, let's go. And use a push stick. From these off cuts, I want two 70 mil strips. So I'll set my fence up at 70 mil. Actually, I'll set it at 75. That gives me room to clean up. Same thing, up against the fence. Push stick, turn on the saw.
and the other one. I want to get out of that knot if I can. Okay, there's all the components that were cut up, all oversized, but they do need to be dressed. Now, in this particular case, these two planks here or boards, they're okay, I can do those on the jointer and put them through the thicknesser, but these ones are a little bit out, so I don't know what I'm going to do, just see if I can put that through the thicknesser actually, and if I can it's going to save me a lot of drama. All right, I, I tried I tried to take a shortcut, didn't work. I thought, oh, I'll put it through the thickness here and just skim a little bit off the top. But as I really thought would happen, as you can tell, if I turn it side on, it still has a bow in it. So what I've got to do is just take this crown off here and then when I've got it flat, I can put it through the thickness. So that's one of the great misnomers that people assume, especially that, well, not even those just starting out in the woodwork. I've seen experienced people that should know better do the same. You think, oh, I'll just put it through the thickness and it'll make it parallel. No, all the thickness it does is mimic what's on the underside. So if you've got a twisted board, you put it into the thicknesser, it will come out thinner, but it'll still have the twist in it. That's why you need a jointer, but unfortunately I've only got a 200 mil jointer, an eight inch jointer, and uh, I've never found the need to spend the extra to get a uh, 16 inch jointer, and that's what I'd go for if I went for another jointer, I'd go from a, an eight inch to a 16 inch. Anyway, it's not the end of the world, we can do it. So the crown part, we'll put in the vise. Grain direction's running that way. Put a dog in. The H&T Gordon tail vise. And we will just only take us a jiffy to fix this. And we'll be back in business. What I'm looking for is a plane that's going to go from this side to that side and not ride over the hump. I want a flat on either side. Nice little candle wax on it, and away we go. Now if I hold the plane there, I can see I've still got a bit of light coming through here, and a bit through here, so a bit more to go. But I'll work my way up the board. And back again. Nearly got it. Happy with that. So what I'm going to do now, take this board into the machine shop, put it through the thicknesser, and then we should end up with a nice square board.